Okay, uh, in the next part of the lecture, uh, we're going to learn about first order linear differential equations. Now, so, so what is this? So the, um, again, so just like separable differential equations, first order linear differential equations, they are um, a particular type of differential equations that uh, for which that there is a, a recipe for, for solution. So it is a bit harder to recognize first order linear differential equations than it is to recognize separable differential equations, but uh, it is in fact easier to solve linear differential equations than it is to solve separable differential equations. So anyway, so here is the, uh, the general pattern for first order linear differential equations. So it, it looks like this: some expression in x times dy dx plus some expression in, in x times y equals some, some other expression in, in x. So notice that um, the linear differential equations are actually linear in uh, dy dx and in y. So they're linear, not in x, but in y prime and, and y. But they're not linear in x. Not linear in x. Okay. Um, so here is an example. So each of these differential equations are linear, right? So the, the first of them is, is, is in fact linear, right? So some coefficient, some uh, expression in x times dy dx, and this is like a of x from the previous slide. So this is a of x. Now, the coefficient in front of y is, is b of x, and the right-hand side is r of x, right? So th this is a linear equation. So notice that it is not linear in x because it has x squared and e to the x, but it is linear in, in dy dx and in y. All right, so linear in y prime and y. Now, the second equation is not linear because it has the product of y times y prime. And th this is not a linear term. All right, so the coefficient at y prime should be uh, an expression in, in just x, it shouldn't have y. So th this is not a linear equation. Equation number three is, again, is not linear because we have a cubic root. So it's not linear. And equation number uh, four is not linear because we have sine y, so it is not linear. So only the first of them is a linear differential equation. Okay, uh, now um, the standard form of a linear differential equation is when um, the coefficient in front of the dy dx is, is just one. So just like we have seen standard form of separable differential equations, that there is a standard form for a linear differential equations. Now, if the coefficient in front of dy dx is not one, then we can just divide the whole equation by that coefficient, and then we will get the standard form. All right, um, so now, what is the main idea to solve um, a linear differential equation in standard form, right? So what if our linear differential equation looks like this? Uh, it looks like uh, y prime plus uh, p of x times y equals q of x. Now, the idea is that we are going to, uh, to find a special... Um, function, I mean, it, it is a very neat trick, right? So we're going to, to find a, a function i of x that is called the integrating factor. And we are going to multiply the whole differential equation by this i of x, right? So the whole differential equation is going to look like i times y prime plus p times y times i equals q times i. So, but this i is really a function of, of x, right? And then we're going to kind of recognize this as the, uh, the left-hand side as the derivative of the product uh, of y times i. Because what is it? If we have y times i, and suppose that we want to differentiate it with respect to x, this is the, the, the product, right? And we can differentiate it according to the product rule. So this is going to be... Um, According to the product rule, this is y prime i plus y i prime. Okay, so what if we we want to, to find um, this i of x such that 
the left hand side of our differential equation is in fact going to be um, this y prime i plus y i prime right so this is the same as um, i y prime plus b y i well notice that you know i y prime on the left and on the right is the same right so uh, we can just delete it oh sorry uh, I, I deleted the, the wrong thing <laughs> um, so Ah, no, 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 yeah, correct. So I, I deleted the, the right thing. So uh, to in order to uh, for our I of X to satisfy the, the, this property, right, um, that when multiplying by the left hand side, we will get the, sorry, when multiplying by I, we are going to get the derivative of the product of Y times, times I. Uh, what we need is, um, is, is basically, um yeah so then we can again so we can cancel by y and the remaining part is just just this uh i prime equals p times i right but i prime times equals p times i is is really a differential equation in in i right so because it, it tells tells us that the i dx equals p times i so and then dividing by by i we will get one over i di equals p dx and then we can integrate and integrating it we get e to the i uh sorry not e to the i so the antiderivative of uh, one over i is ln i equals well we don't know what p is so i will just leave it in, in this form p dx so which really means that i is e raised to the power of the antiderivative of p well, of x dx right but it kind of works backwards too right so if our integrating if our i is of this form is e raised to the power of the antiderivative of p of x uh, then basically if we multiply by this i then um our differential equation becomes kind of very neat so the left hand side is going to be just the derivative of the product of y times i and then we can solve it by integrating so uh, here is how so basically here is the uh, outline of the, the method so th this is how we can find uh, such the such an integrating factor i of x <coughs> Uh, and uh, th this is the, the, the summary, right? So in order to solve a linear differential equation, what we do is we first convert it to the standard form. Then we find the integrating factor, which is uh, done as follows. We first integrate the uh, coefficient at, at, at y. And then we raise e to that power. Right? And then, basically, after doing this, our differential equation, so the left hand side really becomes uh, y times i prime and that that equals like q of well sorry q times i but then it means that the derivative of the unknown function y times i is q times i right so which means that y times i itself is going to be the antiderivative of q times i dx so which in turn means that y is going to be uh, well y is going to be one over i times the antiderivative of uh, q i dx all right um and here is the the answer now it, it kind of sounds complicated but uh when you do a couple of exercises you will realize that it is in fact it's not really harder than just uh, you know in integration so the 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 only difference with the integration that you are used to from um, poly or junior college is that now you, you will have to do it two times right so here, here is why you you will need to do it two times right so the first step is to to see that this is our p of x right and uh, the integrating factor to, to find the integrating factor we first integrate p of x dx and in, in this case this is going to be uh, 
the integral of 1 over x dx, which is ln x. So notice that x is, is positive, so I'm not um, writing the absolute value sign. Oh yeah, uh, maybe I should have mentioned it. So when we find the integrating factor, we just need, so at, at, at this stage, you know, I could add plus C, right? But again, so now I'm looking to for an integrating factor. So I, I, I want to find a, the, the, this I of X such that if I multiply the whole equation by I of X, then the whole equation becomes the, the left-hand side of the new equation becomes the derivative of the product of Y and the integrating factor, right? But then it is just a trick to solve the differential equation, which means that I, I don't really need to find all possible integrating factors. So which means I don't need plus C here because I don't really need all possible integrating factors. It is enough to find just one integrating factor, right? So which is why I, I, I will do it without plus C, right? So now the integrating factor itself is, uh, is e raised to this power is e raised to the power of x which is just just x right okay so the integrating factor is is x so it it means that in order to solve the, this differential equation we need to multiply it by x okay and this is how what's going to look like it's going to be x times y prime uh, plus um, x times one over x times y and x times one over x is just one so i'm going to just just delete it equals x times e to the x. Now, the theory tells us that now the left-hand side is going to be, in fact, the derivative of x times y. Let me just, ch ch just check that this is actually true, just to, to show you that it, it works. Now, pretend that we haven't really uh, done all the previous operations, and then we just want to differentiate x times y, right? So to differentiate x times y, we apply the product rule. So the derivative of x is, is 1 times y is, is y plus x times the derivative of y is, is y prime. And it works, right? So it is precisely the left-hand side of our, well, differential equation um, obtained, well, after uh, multiplying with the integration factor. It is y plus x times y prime. Okay. Equals x times e to the x. Right? But... It means that the derivative of x times y is the given function x times e to the x. But then it, it follows that x times y itself is going to be the antiderivative of x uh, e to the x. So x e to the x dx. And then we, we just integrate, and then th that's going to be essentially the, the answer. Um, well, we can integrate it by parts. So to integrate it by parts, we differentiate x and integrate e to the x. So it's going to be e x e to the x minus. Uh, now we differentiate x. It's going to be one times e to the x uh, dx, which is x e to the x minus e to the x plus constant. Okay. So what we we have uh, found that x times y equals this expression. Now solving for y. To solve for y, we just need to divide by by x or multiply by one over x. So y equals uh, basically x e to the x minus e to the x plus c divided by x. And that's the answer. All right. So I hope it's clear. So here is the same thing in printed form. All right. And now we're going to, uh, to do the initial value problem. So and again, so the first um, step is to find the integrating factor. Well, okay, it is a bit harder than, than, than that because here we have some coefficient in front of dy dx, right? So the first step is to change it to the standard form by basically by dividing by that, that uh, coefficient, right? So we've got to multiply the whole thing by one over x, right? So one over x times the whole thing. Okay, so doing that, the left-hand side, uh, we are going to change the left-hand side to dy dx plus 2 over x y equals 1 over x times cosine x. Okay, so our differential equation is essentially equivalent to this, so let me just change it to, to y prime. Now, this 2 over x, 
is our coefficient at y. So this is our p of x. So we are going to need it to find the integrating factor, right? So to find the integrating factor, we first integrate this 2 over x, right? So uh, 2 over x, the integral of 2 over x dx is is what? Is, is basically 2 along x, right? Now, the integrating factor is e raised to the, this power. So i of x is e raised to the power 2 ln x which is essentially e raised to the power ln x and then squared. But e to the power ln x is, is just x, so this is just x squared. So the integrating factor is x squared. So which means that now we've got to multiply our differential equation, not the initial one, but the standard form by x squared, right? So the standard form, we need to multiply it by x squared. Doing that, we will basically get this x square y plus x square times 2 over x. And, and here, well, x cancels out. So this is just 2x. So let me rewrite this as 2x. y equals x squared times 1 over x. And this is just, just x, right? So I'm going to, to write x cos x. All right, now, according to the theory, this thing the, on the left-hand side is, in fact, the integrating factor, which is x squared times y prime. You, if you want, you, you, you can check it according to the, by, by the product rule, as I, as I did for the previous example. But as a matter of fact, you, you don't have to. I mean, because, you know, the theory is always right. So it's just, I'm going to just try it like this. Right, so which means that um, x square y is the antiderivative of x cos and x dx. And I have already computed this antiderivative in some previous, um, one of the previous examples. So I'm not going to repeat it. It's going to be um, x sin x plus cos and x plus constant. Right, so which means that uh, y equals really x sine x plus cosine x plus constant divided by x square. All right, this is the general solution of the differential equation. Besides that, I have the initial condition. So now in order to solve the initial value problem, I need to uh, substitute pi for x. So x is pi and 2022 for y, right? So doing that, I will get 2022 equals x times sine of pi. Uh, sine of pi is, is just zero. Okay, so zero plus cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative one. So minus one plus c divided by pi square, right? Okay, so solving for C, I'm going to get uh, 2022 pi square equals minus 1 plus C. So which means that C is really um, 1 plus 2022 pi square. And then basically um, Y is going to be X sine X plus cosine x plus c is now 1 plus 2022 uh, pi square, everything divided by x square, and that's the, the final answer. Okay, so here is the, the same, basically, uh, the same solution in printed form, and yeah, that's it about linear differential equations.